Tabernacle Roaming. Upon completion of this course, you will be able to understand the basic concept of roaming, summarize basic principles of roaming, and list application scenario of roaming. Introduction to roaming concept. Tabernacle Roaming Overview. Roaming allows an SDA to move from a coverage area of an AP to that another AP with non-stop service transmission. So in this figure, the SDA is moved from the AP number one to AP two without the service interruption. So this process is called roaming. So when you configure so for the roaming, so the first thing you need to make sure is so this kind of the roaming services they must using the same SSID. Okay, for the channel, it's recommended is using two different channel to reduce the interference cost when they perform the rooming on the overlapping area. The purpose of WLAN rooming. The packet are lost, all the service are interrupted due to the long authentication duration. The user authorization information remain unchanged. So when we perform the rooming, we hopefully the, we don't need to do the uh, authentication anymore. And the last, the user IP address must be unchanged. Okay, because if the IP address is changed when you perform the rooming, then your current uh, the networking process might be interrupted. Number two, introduction to rooming principle. And this is the process. When the SDA need to perform fast roaming, it send a roaming request to its channel. So right now the PC is connected to the AP number one. Okay, this BSA is using the channel number one. So the SDA send a, a roaming request to its channel. Okay, right here. So when the roaming when the roaming is triggered, so the roaming is triggered when the SDA reached the threshold. So now already reached to the edge already. So this is the uh, the coverage of the AP number one, AB one. So rooming threshold. So the rooming is triggered when the service quality reached its threshold. So the PC will understand because when the signal become very weak and they almost lost the signal. So they know this one might be the threshold for the AP. So the operation, so the STA will start associate with the new AP and the associate with the original AP. So since right now, uh, I'm going to leave this um, BSA soon. So I will need to the associate with my origin uh, AP and I need to connect to another new AP. So this is the process of the rooming. Network architecture of WLAN rooming. So from a figure here, you notice they have two AC, AC number one, AC number two. So both of them is already uh, configured the inter AC tunnel. So the AC number one managed two AP, AP one, AP two, and the AP number three will be managed by AC two. So right now the PC perform the rooming from the AP number one and enter to the BSA of the AP number two. So this kind of rooming we will call as intra AC rooming because these two AP is managed by the same controller. So when the rooming is happening within the same controller, we will call as an intra AC rooming. Okay, no matter this is layer two or layer three. So now the PC is continue performing the rooming. So right now they try start to room from the AP number two, entering to the AP number three BSA. So this rooming we will call as an inter AC rooming. So right now I perform the rooming from the AP number two enter to the AP number three BSA. So now these two is managed by different controller, controller number one and controller number two. So this this kind of rooming we will call as an inter AC rooming. Number three, the rooming application scenario. Layer two rooming. For the layer two rooming, okay, the blue color dot is showing this is the packet before the rooming. 
So when our STA is still at the BSA on the AP right here, okay, this AP using the VLAN number 10 and same to another AP. So this is AP2 using VLAN 10 also. Okay, it's the same VLAN. So uh, the hash AC is, is actually stand for the home AC. Okay, home AC and the home AP. And this is a foreign AC, foreign AP. So before I room to another area, the user data is sent forward directly to the internet. Okay. And after I perform the rooming, so when the SDA enter to the another BSA, so now my packet will be go through the FAC and then go to the internet. Okay, this is only happening on the layer two rooming. Okay, now the layer three rooming. So what's the difference between the layer two and the uh, layer three? So now this is the Donner forwarding. The control here, the hash AC, form the carrot Donner with the hash AP. So this is a carrot Donner between hash AC and the hash AP. Then the FAC also form its own carrot Donner with the FAP. In between the controller, hash AC and also the FAC, both of them is already configured the inter AC tunnel. Okay, it's already enabled and they form the tunnel. So right now, my STA within my own BSA here, the service data is actually sending. Okay, right now this is a tunnel forwarding mode. So the user data is actually forward. Okay, this is my user data. You're using the tunnel. If you still remember, the data forwarding mode, all the user data have to forward back to the controller using the cap up data. So they'll come out from the data, go to the controller, and the controller will go into redirect to the internet. Okay, this is happening before roaming. Now, the SDA room to another AP. You notice right here, the AP is using the VLAN 20. This AP is using a VLAN 10. So basically they belong to two different broadcast domain. So now the PC want to continue to access to the internet. Now the traffic will go borrow using the tunnel right here. Okay, my data service will enter to the camera tunnel. So I entering the camera tunnel and come out from the FAC. And, and I know because my current data is actually come from my hash AC area. It's not from this area. Even for the VLAN that I'm using right here, they doesn't support in this area. So I need to go back to my home AC there. So now the FAC have the connection between the uh, hash AC and the FAC using the in the AC tunnel. So you're going to redirect the user data sent to the tunnel here. And then to a tunnel, come out to the controller. Okay, then the AC will going to help the user redirect the packet to the internet. So this is a rooming for the layer three in tunnel folding mode. Then the next one in the direct folding. So this scenario will be more complex. So we already understand the SDA before perform the rooming. Okay, so what's the difference here? So I'm going to repeat again the SDA want to go into the internet on the home AP here. And right now it's the direct forwarding. So the user data will not using the web data. My data can go directly. I can go directly to the network. Okay, because when we're doing the direct forwarding, all the encapsulation and decapsulation will be done on the AP. Okay, everything will be managed by the AP and it's not controlled unless we're using the data forwarding. Data forwarding is managed by controller. Direct forwarding is managed by AP. Okay, now, after the PC perform the rooming, so right now I inside the area on the VLAN 20 here. Okay, this network device all using the VLAN 20. So my SDA want to continue the, the services without interrupt. So now my packet will using the web planner here. Okay, even this is a direct forwarding because this direct forwarding they require the PC go back to the AP. So I need to use the carrier tunnel on the uh, the FAC here. 
Okay, I borrow the tunnel here. Okay, borrow the inter SA tunnel and come back to my network. So they have to do that. Then after come back already, because right now my forwarding is called direct. So the direct mean all the user data must be managed by AP and it's not the controller. So this is the reason why when the packet come out from the inter AC tunnel, we will straight down to the AP. Okay, it will go down. You go down to the AP. And then the AP will redirect the user packet to the internet. So this happening to the direct forwarding in the layer three. So to prevent this happen, so that's why uh, inside the controller here, they have one more feature we can enable and we call it as a home engine. Okay, home engine. Please. Okay, try to enable on both sides, the home edge, uh, home AC and also the foreign AC. After enable, what's the meaning of the home agent? That means the AC we're going to pretend as the agent. So when my user data using the cap web tunnel, all right, so I'm using a cap web tunnel, I try to return to my network. Okay, now the packet reached to the controller here. So the controller is already enabled the home agent. So that means I'm going to pretend as the uh, the AP right here, I become the agent. So anything you can forward the packet to me, I will help you to hang, handle the packet and I will help you to send to the internet directly without go back to the AP. Okay, that's why you can see the green color dot here. After they're returning to the original network, they can go to the internet directly. Okay, so this is only when we configure this kind of layer three rooming in the direct forwarding mode, we are recommended to enable the home agents. When rooming on a small enterprise network, one AC, so this network connection we call as an inline networking. My AC have an uplink and also the downlink. So all the traffic have to go through the AC. So, and this rooming, okay, is called intra AC rooming. No matter it's layer two or layer three, okay, it doesn't matter. Then the next one, rooming on the medium and the large enterprise network. So on the large enterprise network, basically they have um, uh, a lot of the AP deploy and the multiple AC because they want to have the uh, the different management. So the AC here you're going to manage is on AP, same to the other area. So for this kind of the, uh, the rooming configuration will be much more uh, complicated. Okay, so you have to understand uh, those of the layer two and also the layer three, uh, the configuration, the IP routing. The rooming application scenario, okay, we can use on the scenario like the network lab, okay, the meeting room and the host, because a uh, host they have a very wide open space area. One AP, uh, one AP might not able to cover the entire uh, spacing, so you need to have a lot of AP. And also you will depend on the concurrent user. They have got how many people actually inside the hall. So when there's too many parties want to connect to the network, then you also require to increase the number of AP. Okay, library, okay, stadium, uh, avenues, classroom, and the domes. Summary, basic concept of rooming. Okay, this one I got uh, do the explanation on the earlier on. So why is the basic concept for the rooming? The working principle of rooming. Okay, how they actually perform the rooming in a different uh, scenario. Layer two, layer three network with the different type of the folding mode. And the last one, the rooming application scenario.